everyone welcome back for another ASMR facts video and today it's about a British Empire the colonies dominions and protectorates we are talking about of the greatest empire at its height in 19th century and early 20th century it was the largest empire in history and for a century was the foremost global power by 1920 it covered 35 millions square kilometers 35 millions square kilometers 24 percent of earth's total land 24 percent as a result of constitutional legal and cultural legacy at the peak of its power it was described the empire on which the sun never sets the sun never sets and as the sun was always shining on at least one of its territories territories Britain became a major power in the Indian subcontinent after the East India Company. Conquest of the Moth Bengal at the Battle of Plassey in 757. The American War of Independence resulted in Britain losing some of its oldest and most populous colonies in North America by 1783 sorry while retaining control of British North America now Canada and the territories near the Caribbean Caribbean in the British West Indies. After the British colonial expansion turned towards Asia and Africa. But let's start with origins. Origins, the foundation of the British Empire. Well, the foundation of the British Empire were laid when England and Scotland were separated kingdoms, separated kingdoms. In 1496, King Henry VII of England, following the success of Spain, Spain and Portugal in overseas exploration, commissioned John Cabot to lead an expedition to discover Northwest Passage to Asia via North Atlantic. In 1578, 1578, Elizabeth I granted a patent to Humphrey Gilbert for discoveries and overseas explorations. England's early efforts at colonization in the Americas had a mixed success. An attempt to establish a colony in Guyana
colonies in the Caribbean islands of Santa Lucia, Grenada, rapidly folded, and Trinidad and Tobago, the first permanent English settlement in the Americas was founded in 1607 in Jamestown, Jamestown, by Captain John Smith. The British West Indies initially provided England's most important and lucrative colonies. Settlements were established in St. Kitts, Barbados and St. Nuvis. England annexed the island of Jamaica from the Spanish in 1666, succeeded in colonizing the Bahamas almost entirely. At the end of 16th century, England and the Dutch Empire began to challenge the Portuguese Empire monopoly in Asia, 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 forming private joint stock companies to finance the voyages. This was the origins. Now we gonna talk about the first, first with commas first British British Empire well that was from 1707 until 1783 Great Britain Portugal and Netherlands and the Holy Roman Empire continued the war of the Spanish succession the East Indies, British and Dutch merchants continue to compete in spice and textiles, with textiles becoming the large or larger trade by 1720. In terms of sale, the British company had overtaken the Dutch in the East Indies. In the following decades, the British East India Company gradually increased the size of territories under its control. An important chapter is the loss of the 13 American colonies. 13 American colonies. Let's focus on that. During the 760 and early 770, relation between the 13 colonies and Britain became strained. The American Revolution began with a rejection of the parliamentary authority and move towards self-government. For that, Britain in response sent troops to reimpose the direct rule of crown in the colonies, leading to an outbreak of war in 700, 1775. The following year, in the Second Continental Congress, issued the Declaration of Independence, proclaimed the 13 colonies sovereignty from British Empire as the new United States of America. United States of America. American independence was acknowledged at the Peace of Paris in 1783. 
the loss of such large portion of British America at the times Britain's most populous overseas possession is seen by some as the event defining the transition between the first and the second British Empire. Wow, the next chapter is Rise of the Second British Empire, which was between 1783 and 1815. The outcome forced to find an alternative location after the loss of the 13 colonies, the new proclaimed United States of America. Well, after that outcome, the British government turned its eyes and attention to Australia. Australia. Well, the coast of Australia had been discovered by Europeans, by the Dutch, Dutch, in 1606. And, but were never colonized after that. In 1717, James Cook, the famous James Cook charted the eastern coast while on scientific voyage. James Cook. Claimed, he claimed the continent for Britain and named New South Wales. Well, indigenous Australians were considered too primitive and uncivilized to require some contracts or treaties, and the colonization brought disease and violence that together with the deliberate disposition of land and culture lead to a full colonization in just a few years. After Britain transformed Australia in the land of the convicts and continued to transport convicts to now New South Wales until 1840, forcing the convicts to build cities and buildings there. Final colonization ended in 1868. Well, the aftermath of that colonization is that the Australian colonies became profitable exporters of wool and gold. Gold and mainly because of the Victorian gold rush, making the capital Melbourne for a time the richest city in the world. In 1839, 1839, the New Zealand Company announced, announced plans to buy large of lands in the New Zealand establish the colony of New Zealand. Meanwhile, the British also expanded their mercantile interest in the North Pacific. Spain and Britain 
had become rivals in the areas of Pacific, of Pacific, culminating in the Notka crisis in 1789. Both sides, British and Spain, mobilized for a great war, but when France refused to support Spain, Spain it was forced to back down from the area, leading to the Notka Convention. The outcome was a humiliation for Spain, which practically renounced all, all sovereignty in the Pacific. Good. The Britain's Imperial Century from 1815 to 1914. The victory over Napoleon left Britain without any serious international rival. Other than Rus Russia and Central Asia, at that time, unchallenged at sea, Britain adopted the role of global policeman. Global policeman. A state of affair later known as Pax Britannica. Pax Britannica. When Russia invaded the Ottoman Empire in Balkans in 18, 1853, fears of Russian dominance in the Mediterranean and Middle East led Britain and France to enter the war in support of Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire and invaded the Crimean Peninsula to destroy Russian naval capabilities. In 1869, the Suez Canal opened under Napoleon III, linking the Mediterranean Sea with the Indian Ocean. Initially, the canal was opposed by the British. A joint force of British and Egyptian troops defeated the Mahdist army in 1896 and rebuffed an attempt of French invasion in Fashoda. In 1898, Sudan was normally made an Anglo-Egyptian condominium, but it was a British colony in reality. The First World War Britain, fears of the war with Germany, were realized in 1914 with the outbreak of the First War. Britain quickly invaded and occupied most of Germany's overseas colonies in Africa and in the Pacific. Australia and New Zealand occupied German New Guinea and German Samoa. Under the terms of the concluding Treaty of Versailles, signed in 1990, the Empire of Britain reached its greatest extent. The colonies of Germany and Ottoman Empire 
were distributed to allied powers as League of Nations mandates. Britain gained control over Palestine, Palestine, Jordan, Iraq, and parts of Cameroon. and Togoland, making at that point the greatest empire of all time. Well, not for long, because the Second World War, war outbreak started, Britain's declaration of war against Nazi Germany in September 1939 included the crown colonies and India and India but did not automatically commit the dominions of Australia, Canada and New Zealand. But South Africa and Newfoundland soon declared war on Germany. In December 1941-1941 would have permanent consequences for the future of the empire. The manner in which British forces were rapidly defeated in the Far East harmed Britain's standing and prestige as an imperial power. And the focus was on the war against the Nazi Germany, who depleted almost all the Britain's resources. Well, decolonization and decline. After the Second World War, changing the global power dynamics. The post-World War era saw a shift of global powers, the emergence of the United States and Soviet Union as superpowers altered the geopolitical landscape. The influence of colonial powers, including Britain, diminished in the face of the, these new structures. The international community, through organizations like the United Nations, increasingly advocate for decolonization and the right of self-determination of the possessions. This put pressure on colonial powers, France and Britain, to grant independence in their colonies. The late 1940s to the 1960s witnessed a wave of decolonization worldwide. Many African and Asian countries gained independence during this period and the British Empire was no exception. Notable events of the decline of the British Empire include the independence of India, independence of India. In 1947, 1947, the gradual decolonization of Africa between 1950s and 1960s and the rel relinquishing of control over various territories in the Caribbean and Southeast Asia led to a decolonization process in the entire British colonies and protectorates. 
and now the end of empire. In 1982, Britain's resolve in defending its remaining overseas territories was tested when Argentina invaded the Falkland Islands. Acting on a long-standing claim that dated back to the Spanish Empire. The British government won the war, the conflict, and started to strategically withdraw from certain global commitments, including military bases and defense obligations in various regions. This withdrawal marked a shift away from the imperial mindset and focus on more practical and sustainable foreign policy. On 1st of January 1984, Brunei, Brunei which is here, Brunei, right here. So, in 1st of January 1984, Brunei's Britain's last remaining Asian protectorate was granted independence, but the independence had been delayed due to the opposition of the Sultan of Brunei, who preferred British protection. Hong Kong handover. While not officially the end of the British Empire, the handover of Hong Kong to China in 1997 90, marked the final significant colonial possession under the British rule. This event, this event symbolized the conclusion, conclusion of a long history of British rule in East Asia. Legacy. The legacy of British Empire is very complex and multifaced with positive and negative aspects. The impact of empire is still felt today in various regions of the world. But here are some key elements, and we're gonna start first with the negative aspects of the empire. Exploitation and economic exploitation. The economy legacy of the British Empire includes the exploitation of resources in the colonized territories. Cultural imperialism. The imposition of European cultural norms and values led to erasure or marginalization of indigenous culture. The effect of the cultural imperialism is still evident in some colonies, even after, even today. The legacy of colonialism includes social inequalities that persists even today. The arbitrary driving of borders without consideration for ethnic or tri tribal, tribal realities has led to ongoing conflicts in some regions. Impact on indigenous people Indigenous population in many colonized regions suffered from the land dispossession, loss of livelihoods and cultural disruption. The negative consequences of these historical actions continues to affect indigenous communities even in present. And these were the negative aspects, but let's discuss about the positive aspects. Well, the British Commonwealth of Nations 
the British Empire legacy included the establishment of the Commonwealth, a voluntary association of 54, 54 states, many of which were former colonies. The Commonwealth promotes cooperation, development and shared values among its members. Legal and political system, many former British colonies inherited and adapted the British legal and political system, including parliamentary democracy and the rule of law. These institutions have played a role in shaping the government structures in the territories. In some regions, the British Empire contributed to the development of infrastructure, including roads, railways, and other administrative buildings. This, while initially serving colonial interests, has often formed the basis for modern development in the areas. The British established education, educational, educational institutions in many colonies, often with the intention of training local elites. Some of these institutions have endured and became centers of learning. And the most positive aspects, the English language, the widespread of English language is a lasting legacy of the British Empire. English has become a global lingua franca, facilitating communication and international businesses. Well, these were the most important and interesting facts about the greatest empire of them all, the British Empire. I hope you enjoyed this video like the others and thank you for watching. And until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye bye.